Joshua is boycotted. But Lisa is being praised as a woman empress. Why are both embroiled in dating rumors but receive such different reactions? And why do some fans develop such a strong connection and pour so much money into someone they only see on the screen? Let's buckle up and explore the reasons through the controversial parasocial relationships motif in K-pop. Joshua and Lisa's dating, epitomes of parasocial relationships. On August 6, 2023, the rumor saying Joshua was dating model Cho Mi Young swept through the internet. And according to the OP, after her delving into the intricate feeds of the two, she uncovered a mosaic of parallels between his posts and the alleged girlfriend. Upon analysis, both frequently showcased objects and items that bore striking resemblances, including an array of things like jackets, bags, and accessories. Among them, the bracelets stood out as the most suspicious because Joshua and Cho Mi Young were spotted to have already worn them in 2020, igniting the belief that they had been dating for three years. Later, fans also found out the uncannily similar locations and times in the photos of Joshua and Cho Mi Young, and a fleeting audio clip resonating with Joshua's unmistakable laughter. <laughs> Starting from August 10, just about four days since Joshua's dating news broke out, there were already protest trucks sent to Pletus Entertainment. On the truck's banner, fans expressed their discontent toward his dating and down-spiraling attitude in his idol career. From then on, things only got worse as in August 12, up to five protest trucks were sent to Hybe to ask for Joshua's departure. And among them, there was one by a sponsorship with 2.5 million album copies, the epitome of how Joshua has lost a fair number of hardcore fans after this incident. Of course, not all Chinese fans were that malicious as lots of threads were explaining the protest trucks didn't represent Seventeen's fandom in China. But still, the damage was done. There was even background music from the protest trucks and some also used them as a hot spot to check in. <laughs> So, needless to say, fans were straight up humiliating Joshua in front of his own company. One day after that, rumor had it that many impactful Chinese fans were planning for a large-scale protest, running 120 LED screens at 54 subways to express their disappointment. The next day, which was August 14, another truck with wedding BGM and decoration as well as a group of Porsches were on parade. The roadmap started from Hongdae, a bustling district of South Korea, and then moved to other famous agencies like SM Entertainment, JYP Entertainment, and YG Entertainment. Because Joshua is the type that only shows the best grooming image in public, and his fans obviously know this, they send trucks with such loud BGM and humiliating messages to hit him where he's weakest, wanting to gain attention from Pletus Entertainment and Hybe and force them to release a statement. The incident is still ongoing, but do you know what is the most surprising thing? While Lisa was rumored to be seen in a relationship and people have found solid evidence for this, she wasn't bashed but even showered in compliments as the epitome of a Wonder Woman, a girl who has built her own empire with talents and hard work so she obviously deserves the best in her love life. Since July this year, there's been a gentle murmur of speculation surrounding Lisa and her dating Frederick Arnault, CEO of Tag Huya, a subsidiary brand in the LVHM group. The origins of the speculation aren't groundless. Rather, they emerge from a series of intriguing encounters that the duo has seemingly shared. In July, Lisa was spotted resting on Arnault's shoulders at a restaurant in Paris. 
Then, at the beginning of August, Lisa was rumored to be traveling with Arno's family to Greece. As there are many similarities spotted in their Instagram photos, and most recently, there was a candid snapshot at a discreet Los Angeles private airport, capturing the two alongside Rose's sister, Alice. However, Lisa has never been bashed a single time. Instead, she even received compliments and was defended in advance by fans. For example, when the dating news first broke out in France, fans were telling each other to stop spreading it and making sure Arnaud's face was covered. Then, when more pictures were leaked and his identity was revealed, there wasn't a single bad topic about her. There was even a thread on Pan praising Lisa, saying she should have been the best idol of K-pop. Considering the professionalism in Blackpink, even when the group was in their most questionable phase of professionalism. So why is there such a difference, especially when the attitude toward the work of Joshua and Lisa was equally professional? They are both hardworking, gentle to fans, and most importantly, never stop perfecting their performances and skills. The answers lie right in the infamous phenomenon of parasocial relationships, which is actually encouraged by entertainment agencies for money regardless of its toxic nature, and how much the companies of the idols choose to emphasize this factor in their group's image. Based on the contrasting reactions of Seventeen and Blackpink's fandoms in this case, it can be assumed that Pledis Entertainment has built the image of Seventeen and a fairly strong relation to the parasocial relationship theory, while YG Entertainment didn't. The term parasocial was introduced by Donald Horton and Richard Wall in 1956. They described it as an illusionary experience, where viewers feel as though they are in a reciprocal relationship with a performer, even though the performer does not know them. Basically, it's a one-sided love from fans to idols in the context of K-pop. And besides the one-sidedness, there are two other characteristics defining this relationship. The illusion of intimacy, which means fans might feel they know the idol on a personal level and also the aspect entertainment agencies leverage most to make money and the degree of duration and intensity. Which means, just like real relationships, parasocial relationships can be short-lived or long-lasting. Intense or casual, according to Lakin in a 2009 research titled Parasocial Relationships with Celebrities, an Illusion of Intimacy with Mediated Friends. Act 4, Illusion Fails and Consequences. So, what is going to happen when a parasocial relationship fails, aka the idol does something out of character or against the fans' expectations like dating? Well, that's exactly what Cohen wanted to find out in the 2004 research. And according to him, intense or obsessive parasocial relationships might lead to unrealistic expectations or even stalking behaviors. With the rise of social media, wealth, and investment in idols, of course the negative effects only amplify. And as you can see in the case of Joshua, despite him not being among the top famous members of the group, he has still received a massive amount of financial support from fans, leading to an equally massive criticism when he breaches their expectations. Consequences ranged from online exposure and hateful speech to real-life humiliation and demanding him to leave the group. The situation is escalating every single minute. But why isn't Lisa suffering from the same situation though career-wise, when both Lisa and Joshua have given their best? Act 5. Debunk the Reactions As I've gone through scientific research for the reasons, one of the most reasonable answers lies in the way Pledis Entertainment builds up Seventeen's image, especially Joshua, to be dependable and relatable pretty much like a boyfriend, touching on the cultural and psychological mechanism of parasocial relationships. While YG Entertainment constructs a more chill and inspiring image for both Lisa and Blackpink, leading to a weaker phenomenon of parasocial relationships in their fandom. But do you know what's interesting? The more important and probably most important factor explaining the difference in fans' reaction lies in the genders. According to the study of Lakin in 2009, genders are greatly interrelated to the intensity of a parasocial relationship. And guess what? Up to 90% of Seventeen's fandom are female. K-pop doesn't exist in a vacuum, it is an extension of Korea's rich cultural tapestry. 
the Confucian heritage of Korean society places emphasis on relationships, respect, and hierarchies. Idols are not just seen as performers, but as quasi role models who embody certain ideals. As they navigate this pedestal, they form bonds with fans who view them not just as celebrities, but as products of cultural heritage. Because fans have invested in idols, idols must do something to live up to fans' expectations, as the basic notion of Confucianism goes. But really, who makes fans invest so much in idols? Well, it's true that no one forces them to do so, but due to various notions in Confucianism, they, and especially Asian fans, are simply wired to do so. For the collectivist orientation characteristics studied by Jin and Yu in 2014, fans don't just support an idol for personal enjoyment. They're part of a collective community, in this case as the fandom, with shared goals like ensuring an idol group wins awards. This communal aspect can strengthen the bond fans feel, not only with the idol but with each other. Combining this aspect with the loyalty and duty traits studied in depth by the book Cultural Hybridity and the Environment, strategies to celebrate local and indigenous knowledge. Fans might feel a heightened sense of loyalty towards their favorite idols, leading to intense fan support during controversies, but also an intense sense of betrayal if an idol doesn't meet fans' moral or ethical standards. In the case of Joshua, as he has always been a dependable and quiet member, creating an expectation from fans that he is loyal and withdrawn, the fact that he breaks this image and dates someone has resulted in an immense backlash. Psychological Factors now, with interactive platforms like Bubble, Weverse, and some idols like New Jeans even have their own app to converse with fans. Idols not only can broadcast their lives in real time, sharing personal moments, but fans can also take steps to strengthen the parasocial relationship when having idols read and respond to their comments in real time. As a result, this creates an illusion of a two-way interaction and worse, a feeling that fans know idols on a personal level, though the idols often showcase their least controversial sides only. That is not to mention how Pletus Entertainment, which might either be intentional or not, has helped strengthen this relationship, particularly releasing documentaries and letting idols talk about the challenges they face, including training hardships, societal pressure, and mental health struggles. Fans seeing their idols persevere might draw parallels with their struggles. In supporting idols, they find validation for their battles, leading to a deep emotional symbiosis that goes beyond mere admiration, especially since Seventeen is one of the biggest cases representing magic from a small company. This motif is embedded even deeper into their fandom. However, it's impossible to blame Pletus either because this is just how the K-pop idols function, and showing the idols' stories also brings possible positive effects, inspiring fans to be who they want and what they are passionate about. mentioned, due to being a deep-rooted part of the K-pop industry and the strategy of entertainment agencies, this type of relationship isn't going anywhere soon. That also means extreme cases like Joshua will continue to happen, just like how EXO's Baekhyun and SNSD's Taeon had to break up under XOL's pressure. EXO's Kai and Blackpink's Jennie split ways due to the same reason. The relationship between Joshua and his girlfriend is just another point in the series that has been lasting for decades. However, do you think with the increasing awareness of many fandoms right now, can the negative side of parasocial relationships be reduced down the road? Plus, what do you think Joshua and Pledis Entertainment would do to manage this crisis?